What's going on guys? My name is Coretta. This is Coretta's Corner. Today I'm going to be talking about shipping your POV, privately owned vehicle, overseas. Um, and my specific um, experience was through the New Jersey Vehicle Processing Center. That's where I shipped my car out of. So definitely step one, read your orders and then call the, either the travel office or PSD um, or maybe have your spouse contact somebody within their outgoing command. Moving on, step number two is going to be heading over to pcsmypov.com. This is the resource for absolutely everything that you need to know about shipping your vehicle. That's where you're going to want to go to get started. They'll have every form that you need, and I will put that link in the description box below. Now, based on the PCS My POV website, basically what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to check your car for any active um, recalls to so make sure there's nothing that needs to be serviced because there is a recall, you may need to have it taken care of beforehand. Um, you're going to have to understand what documents you are personally going to need. Um, there might be special documents you may need, for example, if you are still making payments on your car, if there's a lien on it, if you are having a, if you have a leased vehicle, you may have something that, um, some special paperwork you need to do. Just go to the website. They will have exactly what documents you need to get from the bank or the dealership, wherever you're leasing your vehicle from, whatever. Um, but it's important to do this work before you try to schedule your appointment and go get your car done because there might be something that is a little bit time consuming. For example, in order to ship the car, the car was initially in my name, we actually had to go ahead and go to the um, DMV and also put my husband as a joint owner on the vehicle in order to get it shipped out. So that was something we had to do and that process itself took a couple of weeks. So I can't stress enough make sure you have abundant time to do this process. I'm gonna put a graphic on the screen now of the documentation that you will most likely need. Now up in the corner, you'll see special additional documentation if you are the spouse checking in the vehicle for the service member. Um, and the rest of it is just general standard stuff that I had with me prepped and ready to go and made the appointment go so much smoother. So. You're gonna to wanna to have a copy of the title. You're going to wanna have a um, front and back copy of the title, copy of the registration, the shipper acknowledgement form, the um, pre-inspection form, um, and then a printed proof of there being either no active recalls on your vehicle or that you've taken care of the active recalls. Those last three things I mentioned can all be found on PCS My POV. You're gonna to wanna to have a copy of your insurance card with you. Um, and make sure you have an address. I know it can be confusing when you have not been overseas to wherever you're going yet, but you're gonna to wanna to have to have an address that they can send mail to, not that they're gonna deliver the car to, because you're gonna pick your car up at another vehicle processing center, but an address where they can send some mail to, so that way, if there's any notifications or whatever, an overseas address. I believe I actually used my husband's barracks address because he's currently staying in the barracks. Although I'm sure if you have a sponsor or if you can get an address from the command that that would work as well. Now, moving on to the cleanliness, this part, you really can't get your car clean enough. I would suggest if you have, if you eat in your car, you have pets in your car sometimes, you have your kids in the car, just go get it detailed if that's what you can afford. If that's not so much in the budget or you don't feel like your car is in that bad of condition, definitely you're still going to need to go vacuum your car out probably a few times. Make sure your car is basically immaculate, okay? That's, I don't know what else to tell you, but it has to be spotless. So with getting your car cleaned, you're gonna wanna make sure that you make sure it's completely dry. So when you do that little car wash in the morning for your appointment, have a little microfiber towel with you because you're gonna need to wipe wipe that down, okay? You're gonna need to wipe it down. It has to be perfectly dry. No, they call it debris, but like pick up your floor mats, get all the crumbs, all the dust, all the stuff. Finally, the final step in preparing your car is to make sure that you have a quarter of a tank of gas or less. They will not take it. If it is a little bit above a quarter of a tank, they will not accept it. Make sure you have a quarter tank or less. 
Part three is the drop-off process. This is all gonna be based on my experience at the New Jersey VPC. So first, when I pulled into the lot, I pulled on to, like into the side. They have like a little pre-inspection area slash like regular park your car. I just pulled up over there. Um, there was a gentleman who came and helped me. He took a look at the car, gave an initial preliminary inspection, kind of to see like if you're gonna need to go away and go vacuum or go burn up more gas, which I had to do both of those things. So they're gonna do a little pre-inspection. Um, after that preliminary look, once he says, yeah, you're good to go, then they send you inside. You're gonna bring somebody all of your paperwork. So this is why it's imperative to have all your documents, like have your copies made, be ready to go, bring additional things, like as far as documentation wise, if you think there's a chance you could need it, just bring it. Especially if you have to drive a little bit of a ways to the processing center to get turned away because of paperwork, oh no, no. After you sit um, and do paperwork inside the office, they're gonna have you sign some things, you're gonna give over some documents, then you're gonna go back out to your vehicle and they're gonna do a detailed inspection. Now this may take a little bit, like maybe 10, 15 minutes, I don't know, depending on your vehicle. Um, they're going to write down every nick, scratch, dent, whatever on your car. They're going to mark that on a chart. They're going to take pictures of it. And afterwards, you're going to sign off on that. They're going to give you a big brown box that they will put in if you have jumper cables in your car, if you have um, like like loose floor mats in your car, they might put those in there. I believe for Guam, I don't know for other countries, but for Guam, they had to take the license plates off, put those in the box. Um and they seal that box up in front of you so that way you know nothing else is going in that box, okay? So you do the pre-inspection, you do, you sign some paperwork, you do the detailed inspection, and then you go back in the office to do just a little bit more paperwork. They give you copies of um, your shipment information form, which will have um, your required delivery date on there, the date that you're gonna get your car. It's gonna have the um, destination VPC, so, the vehicle processing center that you're supposed to pick your car up from. Um, and it will have just some other key information that you will also provide you a copy of the form that had um, the documentation of the dents and scratches. Make sure you keep both of those papers as you will need them for picking your car up. All right, so that brings this video to a close. Thank you so much for watching it all the way through. If you made it here, I really appreciate it. Please give a thumbs up if this was helpful to you in some way. I know that we all need support in this process and it can be very confusing. The government does not make things very clear for us. Definitely check the description box. The links for PCS My POV will be there as well as the link for the active recall place. I hope this was helpful. Thank you so much for watching and I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.